What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gump's Podcast, episode number 10. And today I have a guest today. Say hello to the chat, guys. What's up, guys? Okay, okay, good, good, good stuff. Let me pull up my my list of things we got to talk about. Today we got a couple things we got to talk about today. Um, it's kind of ironic. The Avengers 4 trailer drops on Friday of last week, and of course the podcast had to be on Friday, so it's <laughs> kind of tough, my dude, so we're a little late to the party, but let's talk about that Avengers Endgame trailer. Um, oh, man. <laughs> uh, Kyle, you start off with uh, what your thoughts are on the trailer. Uh, I just think it looks great. <laughs> it feels very different to Infinite War. It feels more personal after everything that happened. Because it seems like it's more character based, which is a good thing. Yeah, um, for me, um, I'm excited for this movie regardless. Um, I do have a couple, I won't say issues with the trailer because everything we I saw was ex- like it was awesome, but um, we all know with the original Infinity War trailer, the first one that came out, half the stuff we saw in there was not in the movie. Like, I wouldn't say half. It's just oh, not not, not legit half. Like, like, like the, the like yeah. the like some some of the stuff that Thanos says in the trailer is not there. Yeah, and that um, was all the time. Yeah, that and um, Iron Man getting decked out. So there's a couple things in, the, in the, yeah. those trailers yeah. that we didn't see. Um, so I'm get I'm getting that feeling with this trailer because there's certain things that are said that are just there to prologue what happened in infinity war so Probably. like with uh yeah like it's that's what this trailer basically is it's just an announcement trailer to say the least so i guess i could say what my biggest problem with the trailer was um the fact that it was two and a half minutes and of just them explaining what happened in okay. infinity war that's all well, it really can... was but yeah. but i will say this I still love the trailer for a couple reasons because I got re- I got really like chills up my arms and my back <laughs> just thinking about this. Um, there was one line in that trailer that I just love so much because it just crushes problem. my soul to, the, to its core. Black Widow says it's gonna work, Steve, and he's like, I know because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh my god brother that is tough that's sad <laughs> like like, yeah. it, it, like this dude is captain america is the superman of this universe not in power yeah but but what he like what he means he is the symbol of hope in the and in, 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 in this moral, in this universe moral standpoint yeah like and to see him so broken down we saw a taste <laughs> of that in infinity war like where he it's it's just a camera zooms in on him and oh, he god. just says oh god <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so that that got me chills. Um, but it kind of feels like he's at the point where he's like, uh, if it doesn't work, I'm we're gonna die anyway. So it feels like he's just gave up now. He's like, this is it. Doesn't matter now. If we fuck up, yeah. we're dead. So that's it. <laughs> yeah, he's at, he's at the point in time where he's like, we lost. We're gonna throw everything we got at him. He's putting all his eggs yeah. in one basket now. Um, he's like, listen, we lost. <laughs> Badly, so Big he, time. <laughs> he's, he, like right now he's just ready to die. He's always been ready to die for what he cares Pretty about, much. but like right right now he's getting the realization that he may actually die. So yeah. I love that entire uh, sequence right there. Um, and it's let me talk about the one thing that I was um, like talking about earlier about the whole monologue and just prologue to the Infinity War. Um, <laughs> I did give it some thought as of recent, like on my first couple viewings, I said, that's useless. Why would you put that in the trailer or whatever? But then, um, it came to me that it looks like, uh, Black Widow's in the same location where Ant-Man shows up. So my theory with Ant-Man was that he doesn't know what the hell happened because first off, if you found yeah. out that you're the love of your life, basically your father-in-law and your mother-in-law are dead because they got dusted, you wouldn't be acting like that. So, yeah, yeah my thought yeah. is that he doesn't know. So yeah, he and, gets and, out, and then he's just like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, he's like, what's this what fertilizer this on the on the roof, bro? I don't get it. I, why is there <laughs> dust here? He's like, my asthma, it's, well, it's kind of tough. Can I, <laughs> yeah, I and, uh, a, a theory I've so, seen on Twitter about him. 
Yeah, so I think... There's a theory thing I saw, sorry, a theory thing no, I you... saw about him, is that it says Ant-Man's still stuck in the quantum realm and the guy at the end's a scroll. <laughs> uh, that would be uh, a big thing, to be honest, since Captain Marvel's showing up. Yeah, yeah, Captain She's Marvel's... fighting scrolls, so... If yeah. he has a scroll, that's quite a cool way to do it, but I think it is just him getting out. But I, I don't mean, think I don't think a he's cool a scroll. Thing, because you can't be a scroll with no. Well, technically, he's he doesn't have superpowers because yeah, it's, it's just the, the suit. It's, it's it's the suit because I know if you have the if the scroll has the ability to change skin, they don't have powers in general. Um, I don't yeah, think so. that he's a scroll. <laughs> I I personally don't think so. Um, I there's doubt a couple it, but I mean, I thought the Fury was cool, but I doubt it. I don't think Fury is a scroll. Um, it, it, it is, it is nah. a possibility for Fury, but I think it's not going to be any of the big heroes. So that's that's my thoughts. But um, mm-hmm. uh, so getting back to the uh, topic at hand, <laughs> I think that it's Black Widow explaining to Ant Man what happened. Um, well, so that's after why... that, after that whole door scene. Yeah, I think that okay. after they buzz him in, she's talking to him and explaining to him what happened. And, um, yeah, so th- that's when I started, like, easing up on that. But it was – when you really, like, are analytical about it, it is just two and a half minutes of them explaining what happened. Yeah. And I'm fine with that, though, because you know why? I, it might not be the greatest world-shaking trailer in the in the universe, <laughs> but it didn't need to be because let's be honest yeah. here, like oh. – <laughs> no one's expectations are going up or down unless it's you got a doomsday situation from BVS on our hands where like <laughs> Thanos' CGI looks like total shit and now he's got fucking <laughs> spikes coming out of his neck. That's the only time I'm surrounded see... by fire and it looks fucking horrible. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> That's the only way I see our expectations really dwindling a tad bit. But Dwind- let's be real. Dwindling here. It's... if it's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, like but Which it won't be. <laughs> yeah, it won't be, because let's be honest here, like the Rooster Brothers are rolling high aces at the, at the casino right now. They, oh, they ain't yeah. failing shit. They're they're fucking about to bet their mo- mom's like you know career on this. They're about to throw <laughs> their house, their mortgage, their kids. They're about to throw everything in one roll, and they're gonna get everything in return. Because let's be yeah. real, Winter Soldier incredible, Civil War incredible, Infinity War yep. insane, and now they're gonna yep. come on this. Um, I think after this, they gotta be done, <laughs> like with of superhero movies for a little bit. I because I, I can't imagine they want that. to continue, but want to continue do. afterwards. But I think they'll wait a few years because I think this has been a a big old project. <laughs> yeah, this has been a one shot thing. Because like, let's be real here. Like the only director before the uh, Rooster Brothers, the only director in the MCU that returned was, jo- uh, what's his face? Uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Uh. Joss oh my Whedon? God. Joss Whedon. I was about to say John Whedon. I was like, that's not it. <laughs> uh, but Joss Whedon's <laughs> the only one that came for a sequel or just did another one in general. Didn't John and he was Iron Man 2 as well? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, he did Iron Man 2. Um, right, so he came but back yeah, there, well. but yeah, yeah. It's I know what you mean. very, very few people in the MCU really did two films. Because <laughs> yeah. it's mostly just people doing like their own little story. And when you look at a Joss Whedon on the set of Avengers 2, if you look up the stories, he was limping, he was exhausted, he was <laughs> mentally tortured, and he yeah. was just, he was spitting fire at the uh, MCU, and he eventually uh, apologized for it, but, like, he was in a pissy mood, to say yeah. the least. And, and the, the fact that... Are, back on their back, fourth so film! So they're going to be worse. Yeah. And, the, and like, they filmed Avengers... these two back-to-back, so they're going to be yeah, worse. Ab- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Avengers 3 and Avengers 4 are back-to-back. See, with... Joss Whedon, he had some, he had some time, not a lot, but he had <laughs> some time. These guys are like, well, we had to do it like one shot, dude. And the only time I've ever seen them like snap on somebody was well deserved. It was um, people constantly asking, "Where's the Soul Stone?" And like, eventually they're like, "It's Where a Hawkeye's the- ball sack. Leave us alone." <laughs> like, I mean, that I understand because like people constantly asking the same question. Yeah, it'll be a limit. And over and over again. I would <laughs> probably smack a bitch. <laughs> like, I don't know yeah, what I would do. Definitely. <laughs> um, But yeah, the trailer was good. It did its job. It just let us know it's coming. Mm-hmm. And yet again, they did the same thing they did last year. It's originally coming out May 3rd, May 4th. 
they pushed it back to April, and I think they just like, hey, let's keep announcing uh, an Avengers movie will be out May, and just say, oh no, it's actually coming out April, just because so we can make it look cool for the trailer with the A and the Avengers, and be like, ha, April, ha, bitch, you thought, and at this point we're just gonna be like, oh, they say Avengers Five is coming out May sixteenth. I'm like, bitch, it's coming out April. Oh, they already confirmed. I'm like, I'll put my house on it. The trailer comes out. It comes out April. Okay, give me your mortgage, bitch. I mean, it's easy money. It's it's easy money at this point. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, um, any final thoughts on the trailer? Uh, Hawkeye being back as Ronan looks cool as fuck. There oh well. <laughs> my god. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it. Did you see the uh, fan-made trailer? It was the Logan style. Uh, of, no, I saw uh, you retweeted it. I didn't watch it, but I can... What was uh, yeah, so different that, about it? It was uh, it was a uh, Logan uh, song, uh, which to me oh, works, a little, it, it, it works a little better. And... He trimmed down the trailer a lot, and it was more fluent. Right. And um, it's I think it's around like a minute forty five, two minutes. So it's not that much shorter, but for trailer terms, yeah. it, it's it's a lot shorter. But um, so he trims it down, but also kind of shows uh footage from older films. So you got oh, like cool. yeah, dude. Like um, when you see uh, it cuts to Thor, like him in the actual Avengers four trailer, and then it looks like he's thinking. Then you see him losing everything and then you see Ronan or Hawkeye and when uh, you see him uh, put the blade on his arm you see him hugging and then kissing his kids in slow motion I'm getting chills think about it dude because oh, we all know let's be real here if you guys don't know Hawkeye turns to Ronan what's the difference uh, Ronan is basically a guy who kills people think of him like a John Wick Jeez. but in the Marvel Cinematic Universe he's well, we killed pretty pissed before, but yeah he's pissed more and he yeah, picked he, up a sword, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's a little mad. He's a little mad, and he goes on a kind of a killing spree, uh, just a tad bit, um, because um, in the comics, as far as I remember, someone murders his family, and it's, it's like kind of tough for the guy who pulled the trigger. <laughs> I think but, Ronan's uh, kind of like a mantle they give off to other people. I can't yeah. remember why, so maybe it is his family. But yeah, we yeah. know his family goes kaboom, turns to dust, so I think that's why he goes to Japan. Decides to kill some bitches. Yeah, I think that was is definitely <laughs> intentional because yeah. I remember when set photos came out and people were like, "Oh my god, Hawkeye's in the Ronin skin and the skin, the Ronin costume." <laughs> and um, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know who Ronin was, so I looked into it. I was like, yeah. "Holy shit, brother, that's cool!" And <laughs> and um, I was like, "It's not exactly, but close enough." Like I said to John Wick, and I'm like, "Okay, that's gonna be really interesting." So clearly. His family got dusted, and people are yeah. acting like it's some breaking news. They're like, I bet you that Hawkeye's family got dusted. I'm like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the entire internet's on that, too. So that's what this trailer does. It's like when you see uh, Hawkeye, uh, and you see Black Widow looking at him, and it just cuts to him hugging his family in Avengers 2. And it just gave me chills. I'm getting chills just talking about it. With that <laughs> song, her. I'm like, oh, man. My <laughs> God, it's... Oh, I, I just can't wait for this movie. I really can't wait. Uh, yeah, the, my, my closing thoughts on this trailer is going to be um, Iron Man. Dude, talk oh, about man, what a no. shit <laughs> life, dude. Like, my <laughs> God. Like let's, look, like, let's quickly look where he was in the beginning of the MCU. He was trapped in a cave, being forced to make a weapon. Now he's trapped in a spaceship with no food. No water for four days, and and guess what? Tomorrow morning he's gonna run out of oxygen. So I was like, oh, yeah. four days, oh shit, dude, that's tough. Maybe you'll start gnawing at your arm. Then maybe you'll live. Maybe you cut off a thumb. You'll you'll get a couple extra days in there. And he's like, oxygen runs out tomorrow. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, you're done. I'm like, you're done. But he, I know, we all know he's not gonna die in there because he's the Godfather of the MCU. But if they yeah. kill him off. In that spaceship of starvation and lack of oxygen, people will riot. I mean, people. He's will not be even in the pissed. movie. He's just in the spaceship for ah. like twenty ah. minutes. And he's dead. It's that <laughs> he's stuff, not even dude. In it. Oh my god! But um, there's some theories going around. Who's gonna save him? People yeah. are like Nebula. I'm like, yeah. Nebula's on the ship with him. What? What do you mean? Fair like point. <laughs> yeah, like, but people are like he, they're not in the same uh, shot together. I'm like. What do you think yeah, that, you know, Nebula's going to be stroking uh, t- uh, t- t- you know, Tony <laughs> off? 
what what do you think is going to happen? They don't know each other. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're freaking out. They're, like, surviving together. I mean, Gamora yeah. and Nebula hated each other. You think she's just going to, like, some random her human bitch? Like, I don't think so. I think that right now they're just there to survive. They're not going to be talking about their life stories and shit like that, where they came from. They're just there to survive. Trying, yeah, yeah, they're not going to hold each shit. Yeah, they're, they're not going to hold each other's hands. So they're on the same ship because they were on the same planet together with the ship like 25, yeah. like 50 yards from them. And people are wondering, wait, wait, hold up. Uh, quick question. Why is the ship running out of oxygen? Why is it like, why can't they just fly away? I'm like, maybe because here's a theory. Maybe. And that badass fight on Titan. Maybe. Just a 1% chance that it got damaged maybe yeah. who knows yeah sh- sh- shit's broken yeah maybe they <laughs> got in they just got enough to end up in the middle of nowhere not the planet nowhere yeah. in the middle of nowhere <laughs> like the closest planet is like 13 light years away you probably just that's cast away on steroids bro <laughs> <laughs> but, cast um, away in space make that yeah, movie ca- <laughs> I, I no i think it's probably been a movie on this sci-fi Wait, channel 13 times that's what over. the martian is what am I talking Baby. about? It is a movie. True, <laughs> true, true. And it's actually a quality movie. But oh, yes. So the theories of who's going to save Tony is Rocket. I think that's yeah. dumb. I don't think that's going to happen. And the well, two most how is he going to get off Earth? Because I don't... Like, how... Yeah, how, I mean, then people are like, Thor's going to save him. I'm like, how does he know where he's at? So here's my theories. Um, Captain Marvel... Um, I think she's the most obvious... Uh, but people are um, speculating that it's not going to be her. And this is a good reason okay. why, because they said it would be too much of a repeat of Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Thor's lost in space, he's basically dying, then the Guardians just happen to run into him. So uh, I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess. Fair, fair point, fair point. And then the next one is Pepper Potts in the rescue of suit, which okay. is the female, female Iron Man suit. Yeah, I know. And that. I'm like, that's, okay. that's definitely plausible. Yeah. Because I mean, let's let's be real here. Um, the rescue, the name rescue, uh, it's kind of on the yeah, nose, but it's, like, it's I mean, right it, there. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it makes sense. So there's that, and there's been rumors about uh, Pepper Potts being in in a Iron Man suit and getting her own suit. Yeah. Um. So there's and that. There's, there's actually uh, a picture of Gwyneth Paltrow put up. Weirdly, no one did anything about it, but she's basically in a suit of armor. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's basically so, been shown off. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, th- that's definitely in the realm of possibility. And um, also, she he, Tony sends a distress signal to her. So maybe there's, like, an off chance she actually gets it. And she's like, Friday, get the ship, <laughs> we're going. And then she fucking, fucking launches it in a nonstop trip. And she's like, pack a sandwich because I'm going to be a minute. And then she, like, fucking flies away. And I think, so... Originally, I was in the whole Captain Marvel ship, and then yep. they did explain that it was too much of a mirror of what happened in Infinity War, and they thought it would be just like a cheap knockoff situation. And I'm like, you mm. know what? I did think of that. You're right. So now I'm starting to think it's going to be Pepper Potts saving um, his okay. life. And plus, it just depends my- if Tony made his suits be viable in space, because that's not happened yet. I think. Um, but he's pretty pro- he's pro- he probably has by now, no. So. Yeah, maybe it was like a just suit just designed for him that go to space. Because like when he was in Infinity War, he wasn't planning on going to space, so that's probably why he just it was like it was just like boom, yeah. I got this suit of armor. Maybe he had a suit of armor ready for space. He's like, listen, bitch, if there's like another space invaders <laughs> situation going on, I'm ready. I got my space suit. It's going to be called on, Rescue, bitch. and I'll be like, let's do this, bitch. Let's do it. Come on, because. <laughs> In the MCU, we haven't seen a suit viable for space, but in the comics, yeah, there's been yet. plenty of suits that have been. So oh, I yeah, think yeah. that this is going to be the first suit we get that's viable in space. Yep. It's like, uh, her, her saving them is actually quite a cool new thing that would happen. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, we talked about the Avengers for almost <laughs> 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty more topics to talk about. We were just having our nerd moment. Um... So let's talk about our next topic at hand. Um, yeah, this one's kind of kind of scary. So, um, <clears throat> uh, Kyle, are you familiar with the Sonic the Hedgehog live action movie? I've heard about it. I also saw the god awful poster, which I guess yeah. that's what we're talking about. 
And oh god. <laughs> there's been different images that I've seen. The one image I saw is a poster with his scrawny his ass legs. legs. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Where's he's Yikes, fi? Dude. He's fi is gone. <laughs> um so there was that one, and then there's the image of um So the silhouette. That's the silhouette with yeah. him just chilling, and I'm like Ew, and then there's another one I just saw recently. Human's arms and legs. For God's it's sake. so gross. And then <laughs> there's another one that just came out today. I think it had Chris Pratt in it. That's it the looks, one I'm it, looking at on my phone right now. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's a teenager that was also yeah. in the NBA who morphed <laughs> with an Alvin and the Chipmunks, and then <laughs> to, it to went through honest, a phase. No. Like it's it's. <laughs> Kind of ugly. And this is why, people, you don't make Sonic the Hedgehog live no, no. action. <laughs> it's just the, so... the poster here with Chris Pratt on it. The design's actually okay. I prefer that one to the long-legged monstrosity it looks like we're actually getting. Because <laughs> uh, <It's> so apparently, <laughs> apparently the poster with Chris Pratt was made when they were considering Chris Pratt to be in it. He's not in it anyway. It's James Marston or whatever his name is. So it looks James like they put Marston, this together. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like they put this together before anything was official. But if that's the design they were going with and they've changed it to this, what the fuck happened? <laughs> I, I I don't know, dude. But my god. I mean like the the one with him on the uh Golden the bridge. Game Bridge. I'm like I'm like, dude, uh, eat a sandwich. My God. <laughs> like first It's just this... a, it's just the proportions as well. It's so anatomically incorrect. <laughs> Cause his legs don't work if they look like that. <laughs> they look like stick legs. I feel like if he's running super fast and he hits a pebble on the road, he's gonna fucking break his shins. <laughs> 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 I'm like, dude, eat a fucking sandwich. My God. But yeah, uh, I when I heard that this was going to be a live action animation hybrid, what my mindset was, okay, it's going to be live action for the most part. And then it's going to be like <clears throat> a, like a Looney Tunes live, like back in action kind of thing. Like here, who framed Roger Rabbit? I thought it was going to be like that. And then I see the poster, yeah. and I'm like, no, no, you guys bet you were trying to go for the full live action just with animation <laughs> elements. No, no, leave him <clears throat> a blue little ball. No. <laughs> Don't mix yeah. him with human legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine if he's actually on the Golden Gate Bridge, what the fuck are people going to do? <laughs> I was just like, wait. Like, you're driving to work one day, and then you see... A hedgehog, NBA player, teenager, like okay, Alvin the Chipmunks fast. knockoff. <laughs> ru- gotta get his hands. And he's running <laughs> on the Golden Break Bridge while you're trying to go to the hospital to get to work. And then you're like, oh, shit, dude. Guys, you'll what never believe what I just uh, you, You'll never believe what I just saw on the road earlier today. A blue hedgehog that looked like a teenage Alvin and the Chipmunks knockoff who's going through a phase who also happens to be in the NBA with them yeah. legs. <laughs> It, the thing like, is, it's weird though. The way they're talking about them, their plans for the design, was they're trying to not go too pixel like or whatever. But it's like, he's a freaking blue hedgehog. He doesn't exist. Make him cartoony. Doesn't matter if he's with humans. Like. Because you're just, you're just making it weirder if you're trying to make him look more real. And, and plus, he like, should be. <laughs> you're. This is one of those things where, like, you're asking us to think that that thing is like real yes they did it with scooby-doo do i love scooby-doo yes do i like the live action movies not not too much i'm not gonna lie not too much but um at least the thing with the dog is they didn't make it super ultra hybrid like live action like there was a cartoony effects to it and You, you can tell he's not there yeah, but like we yeah. don't care because it's a fucking talking dog. Like <laughs> we don't care. It's the fact that you're like, well, see this blue hedgehog that wears sneakers. We need it to make it look on real. Two legs. That can stand on two legs. It eats chili dogs for a living. <laughs> for some reason, has to look so real. It has to look so real. Just convince people that that he's real. 
Bitch, I know it's not real, okay? You don't need to convince me. Like, I'm fine if it looked fake. It's fine. Like, I'm not saying make the CGI look shit, but I'm saying change the design in general. Make it more cartoony, like a Looney Tunes back in action, like a or make it Roger look Rabbit. Like Sonic. <laughs> yes, like, just like, you don't have to go the realistic route. Just saying. Any more thoughts? Because I'm done on this failed abortion of a mess. Uh, I think it's probably most likely going to suck balls. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to suck. I mean, let's be honest. Because what, um, what they're showing right now isn't helping. <laughs> yeah, like um, you had Alvin the Chipmunks, <laughs> did not work. Then you have the Smurfs, did not work. And now you're going to have this. <laughs> ah! Kind of <laughs> tough. Okay. Um, the next topic at hand, we got Doctor Strange is getting a sequel. And I'm really happy Whoa. about that. Because um, I really, really, yeah. really enjoyed Doctor Strange. It was a lot of fun, and oh, yeah. I was I was concerned about him getting a sequel in general, it, like yeah. for the longest time. Because I mean, like it's been in the Cumberbatch. Thing was said for ages, dude. Like it's gotta be hard to get him into a studio for fifteen minutes. Yeah, keep him in for fifteen <laughs> minutes. He's like, okay, I got the Grinch. Okay, I got this. I got that. I got that. I got Sherlock. I got. I'm, I'm recording the fifth series right now. I gotta go, guy. I'm like, the dude's all over the place. He's very, oh, yeah, yeah. very, very, very famous and very popular all over the globe. So I'm really excited they were able to sit him down, get his schedule going, and they got the original director back. And I'm yeah, really happy Derrickson. about that. So happy with that, yeah. Yeah, because no one else, I don't think anyone did, else can do him. Yeah, I'm like what he was able to do with the visuals in the first one was <laughs> bonkers. <laughs> like I watched that movie twice recently. I showed it to my my buddy and then another friend of mine, and they both really really liked it i showed it to my one friend because she's um trying to like write her own story and she's like writing magical elements and stuff like that i was like, I'm like hey awesome. I'm, I'm like i'm showing you movies because she didn't uh, <laughs> like watch a lot of movies growing up so i'm like let me show yeah. you this she really enjoyed it and then i showed my one buddy who's who's a movie fan but tended to like skip on a lot of mcu movies because he was going through an artsy phase because he went to uh, right. film college and all that shit. so he was going through an artsy phase Let's, i'm gonna be real here he's still kind of going through that but like he's easing <laughs> he's slowly easing out of it so uh he was going through a phase where like everything in the mcu is garbage because it's so formulaic. you like so i finally showed him this movie he really enjoyed it he's like listen it's it's not it's not the it's world's good. greatest uh script or anything like that but he's like i had a <laughs> lot of fun with it i'm like See, it's superhero yeah. <laughs> movie can just be fun, and like on a visual standpoint, my brain turned to a fried egg. This is your yeah. brain, and then this is your brain on drugs. Cracked egg, thrown on the frying <laughs> pan, bitch. And that's that's me after Doctor Strange. I'm like, oh my god. So I'm really Still, glad they got him back. Like, just because yeah, yeah. what so he did, that. what he did in that New York scene in the finale. <laughs> my mind was just like I just give up on life. <laughs> like I I can't. I tried to follow the action. I'm like mind is just sizzling in your head. Thinking about it, trying to comprehend it. It's just like <laughs> just give up, which is kind of ironic too, because the whole thing that H and One is saying that everything does not have to make sense. So in a way, she's saying yeah. stop trying to comprehend everything, and and mm. and, and, and like I didn't really grasp that until the end of the movie i'm like okay i'm just gonna stop comprehending the action and just accept it and once i accepted it my brain was put into a freezer and it was finally relaxing <laughs> like oh my god so i'm yeah like i said i'm really happy he's coming back and i'm really happy they're getting a sequel uh you got any final yeah. thoughts on this um i just i just want to see more doctor strange because well in the, his movie and the magic stuff he did was cool infinity war and they upped it by like a million because yeah. his fights were insane so i'm looking forward to seeing more of that stuff because holy crap that fight yeah. with Thanos is awesome yeah what they said was um the writer discussed um people as people were asking him how long was he in that um that that loop and he's like i'm not gonna give you give it away because um it's up for interpretation but he said i will say this it is enough for him to go from where he was in uh doctor strange to Infinity War, so he was in there for a long ass time. So that's why he made <laughs> such a massive leap. And it doesn't help that the dude's so intelligent and he picks up things really <laughs> quickly. So yeah, really uh, easily. 
I, I'm really excited to see what kind of trippy shit we're going to see in Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. I want to okay. see who he's up against, because Doctor Strange has a lot of cool villains. Like, there's Nightmare and all his tons of cool guys, so just look yeah, forward th- to seeing when they take I the think, character. I think they're going to do, uh, what's his name, Mordor or Mordor, or whatever. what's his face? Uh, what guy? <laughs> the, the, the guy wearing green... The guy that was just oh. like, the bill comes to... I hate that guy. Oh, my God. Uh, well, the guy that trained him a little bit. Yeah, I trained him a little bit. He's like, fight! Uh, fight more fight more like your life goal? depends on it! Because one day, it may... <laughs> Is it Mordo? That guy. Baron yeah, Mordo? Ba- yeah, Baron. Yeah, that guy. Um, He's well, supposed to be his arch nemesis. Like, no, That's bitch. supposed to be his arch nemesis. And they turn him into yeah. a bitch. I was pissed. <laughs> like, I like... <laughs> I love that movie. I said I like this movie, but that was the one thing that I will cringe on a daily basis about. Like, well, he's bad it, now, so he was just yeah, good yeah, at the start. Ba- he, yeah, he's bad, but it was why he went bad that just upsets me. He's like, mm. oh, you saved the universe, but you bent a rule. It might be a massive rule, but you bent a rule. Dude, Everyone's fine now. Magic, you know what? So, yeah, he, he, yeah. I'm gonna fuck he everything up point. now. Like, <laughs> you may have a point. <laughs> <laughs> like he it just came like, the execution and the way it was like there's a lot of things that uh I felt like were wrong for me personally like the way it was written the way it was acted the way it was directed came off very like he was coming off very childish okay. like the saying the whole thing of like the bill comes due I'm like stop saying that like I don't <laughs> care if the bill comes due we're fighting a situation where the entire planet is gonna be fucking melted you, oh don't don't bend a rule to save the world because listen we if we die today we're not gonna be fighting any other situation it's good i'm like bitch i don't care if you gotta break a rule to save the world save the fucking world and he's like the bill comes to you just put the price on their heads i'm like the price ain't gonna be as big as us being eaten by a fucking diarrhea clown i don't give a shit like i want to live like <laughs> just like that whole thing I was just like it made me scratch my head like hmm be eaten by a dark matter cloud or suffer the consequences for breaking a rule later down the line ah, I'll figure <laughs> I'll figure that one out later I'll pick option number two whatever so, I'll yeah, just that, do the time thing leave me alone <laughs> yeah yeah I'll, I'll just, fuck I'll figure it out later I'll I just do I'll, it anyway <laughs> yeah Bill comes to my ass fuck you okay <laughs> n- n- next next topic at hand um so Kyle hasn't seen the else world stuff but I have so yeah. I'm just gonna go on a, off a tad bit of tangent I'm not gonna go spend too long on this um but the else world story is if you guys don't know is um in the Arrowverse, Arrow, Supergirl, and Flash, it was a crossover with that. They didn't have uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow in this one. But um, what are my thoughts on this? It's a it's a good uh, crossover. It's not as good as uh, last last year's, which was uh, Crisis okay. on Earth X. Great crossover. Love that crossover. That one was good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this one felt like it was lacking something. I'll get into that in a minute. But what I really, really loved about this one is the fact that once the crossover, like, the episode starts, right? We didn't have to deal with any petty bullshit. We didn't have <laughs> to hear any fucking monologue. Boom! We're right into the crossover. We It's freaking uh, Stephen Amell as Green Arrow waking up in Barry Allen's bed. I'm like, it's wow, insane. that was quick. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, yeah, we had the whole villain reading the book, and then boom, it was him waking up. I'm like, yeah, you, you gotta expect that, but it started off rather quickly in the first 10 minutes Barry and Alan are already Barry and Alan <laughs> listen to me <laughs> Barry and Oliver are already uh, doing their back and forth already and switched. that's yeah. yeah and what made this uh, cross crossover really really work for me was the fact that they had so many opportunities to banter back and forth uh, Barry and Oliver and I loved it their their banter is becoming more of like a Batman and Superman, and I'm loving it. I mean, we can obviously assume that Issues, yeah. Superman is the uh, Flash character, and then the Batman is the Green Arrow character. It's just like not all on stature or what they are, but just based off a of tone alone. So yeah. Flash being the, the hopeful person, and then then Arrow being the grim, like I use my anger <gasps> to get to get good I with shots. Oh. Yeah, I and it's be funny too because so they both made fun of each other the first the first episode. The first episode, they just made fun of each other. So when they got <laughs> Supergirl, uh, Flash and uh, Supergirl were making fun of uh, 
Oliver, because they're like, hey, what's the great arrow sound? Like, oh, oh, <laughs> doing dark sounds and shit like that. That was funny. <laughs> but then um, when they were training, they were actually mimicking the first ever crossover uh, when they were training together. And it was like, you remember yeah. in the first crossover when uh, Oliver shoots two cross shot him in the tr- back. Sh- yeah, <laughs> shot twice in the back. Barry got to do that to um, Oliver. <laughs> awesome. And then what happened was uh, – <laughs> He it, Oliver starts screaming in agony, and then Barry's fucking cheering, You're like, "Yeah, it doesn't feel so." Good. I've been waiting four years for that. I'm like, "Oh my god, this shit's insane!" So Oliver does his Oliver thing. He's like, "This is serious," and then I'm like, "No, th- that was kind of funny." And then he, so Oliver tries to get under his skin, and th- I thought this was really good. I thought this was a good jab for at the Flash show. So when he Al- Oliver's trying to get Flash mad because. Because right now they don't have their power. They have each other's power. So yep. Barry, Barry's basically the Green Hour now. He's like, this is serious. Yeah, you got to use your amazing. anger to, to like really be good at what you do. And so he starts getting under his skin. And he's like, at least I don't need to like, I can't. Like, he said that um, you can't survive eight hours without a pep talk. I'm like, <laughs> it's kind of true though. Um, clap, 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 clap. Yeah. yeah, I was like, dude, that was, I was like, that shot's fired, and I thought that was awesome. <laughs> um, but overall, the series, the season was good. The season, the, uh, the crossover was good. Crossover. Yeah. Um, the Supergirl stuff was pretty good. Um, there were some things that pissed me off. I'll, I'll get to that really briefly. Uh, but basically, have you? How much of Supergirl have you watched? I watched the first season and then CW took it and it went crap. So I haven't watched yeah, so, any of this stuff. <laughs> so uh, basically what happens is in season two, Superman, we get... Okay, uh, I've explained this to my viewers. I've, I've seen the Superman this. stuff. I've seen that yeah. stuff. So Superman is more powerful than Supergirl. Not because one's a man, one's a girl. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. It's, it's been because... on the planet for longer. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> exactly! <laughs> so he had more time to absorb the sunlight the than sunlight. Her. Yep. He had years, years, maybe even a decade of training, right? Probably more than that, yeah. The, the, this chick uses her powers, and she's on her second year. She's at the beginning of her second year with her powers, right? <laughs> Tell me, explain to me, how is it that she's able to beat Superman in a fight? <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. We're, we're calm. We're calm. Okay, so... They did that again, basically. <clears throat> uh, so what my a guy I watch calls Superman a jobber. Basically, it's a wrestling term. I don't watch wrestling, so I'm glad you told me that. <laughs> it's basically a term to make, for one person to come in just to make the other person look good. Look better. Yeah, he's a jobber. It's kind of <laughs> true. I mean, like in this, like literally the entire Supergirl episode, not the Flash, not the Arrow episode, but the Supergirl episode. You had the other world of uh, Supergirl's sister. Saying how good she is. You have Barry and Oliver saying how good she is. That's not enough. You have Superman get his fucking ass kicked left and right, becoming a joke. And then you have him basically say this no joke. He's like, Yeah. What's the world? Uh, the world doesn't need me because the world's got you. You're so powerful, Kara. You're so much powerful than me. Every time we meet, you remind me how much more powerful you are than me. Are you fucking kidding me? Let's stroke her ego a little bit more, please. Why don't you? Because she's already got an ego of her own. She's got the biggest <laughs> effing ego in the entire trio of these characters. Between Oliver, Flash, and then her, she's got the biggest fucking ego out of them all. You just keep stroking it, and everybody keeps stroking it, because you know what? Let's just stroke it. Wow, just let's keep really shoveling sh- in the compliments. It, keep doing it, it. <laughs> it sounds like I really hated this, this thing, but I really did it. It's just the whole Supergirl shit really yeah, pisses me you. off really pisses me off <laughs> okay we're gonna end it off on that great thing can I say one super- thing about uh, the crossover I really hope Superman gets his own show because Tyler Hoechlin however you say his freaking name is really good as him besides yeah, you saying I, you know him just going I, yeah Supergirl you're better than me but I mean I hope hope they give him more shit because I really like him <laughs> I don't think they are because when you look at the CW shows DC's Legends of Tomorrow Flash Arrow and then Black Lightning, they're all different from each other. There's not going to be much of a difference between Supergirl and uh, Superman. And Same there, there would be. B- There's a big enough difference between the characters. 
There's not. I mean, but I you see, see, there's a massive difference between the Arrow show, between the Flash. Like, there's a distinctive difference. And when you look at the Supergirl show, they're using a lot of Superman's villains. They're using a lot of uh, his villains and a lot of his storylines. So I don't think that it's going to happen personally. I would like to see it, but I don't see having a Superman and Supergirl show running at, at once. I just, I personally don't mm. see it. I would like it, but it's not, probably not going to happen. I and, oh yeah. I think there's a difference enough, but yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I get what uh, you mean. Yeah, but um, actually, yeah, I forgot you didn't see the crossover. Um, Superman's running away. He's actually leaving Earth. He's hanging up the oh. cape. Yeah. He's hanging That's up the cape. Ridiculous. Yeah, he's, he's going to Argo, <laughs> basically the revived Krypton. Because Lois Lane is having a kid, and he's like, listen, after he was done stroking Supergirl's ego, he's like, <laughs> I- I'm having a baby, and we're going to live on Argo for a little bit. Maybe nine months, maybe longer. We don't know. Okay. So, yeah, no no more just Superman. Leaving Earth makes sense as well. Lois yeah. just goes, fuck everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it, that's, that's it's whatever. Uh, that just like that's an ex- that's an excuse to get rid of him, so he's not in episodes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that's all it's been. I, the, I'm not even gonna get into it. I'm not even gonna do it. We're we're already. Oh, wow. We're running over time. It don't, it don't yeah, matter. No I'm, I'm glad we're running over time. But it's always gonna have more quality content. But um, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm done talking about the Elseworlds story. Um. Cool. Um, actually, no. That that about covers it because yet again, no one sent Twitter comments or questions or anything like Yay. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, actually, do you have any uh comments on anything we talked about? So we talked about Avengers and Game Trailer. We talked about Sonic the Hedgehog. Ugh. Doctor <laughs> Doctor Strange getting his own sequel, and then um, yeah, that's and then the Elseworlds story. And I had my fill because I'm probably going to get into another rage if I uh, talk about more of this. <laughs> Supergirl stuff. I do not hate the Supergirl stuff. Let's be clear. I don't hate it. It just feels like, th- like she's got this massive fucking ego. <laughs> and if it was Barry or Oliver, everyone will call him out on their bullshit. But since it's Kara, it's okay because it's Supergirl. Yeah, it's it's okay. Mean. I'm like, wait, they, give me, <laughs> remind me. Didn't people complain about Oliver having this ego because he was trying to run everything? Uh, yeah, and they stopped that after like a season because he got bitch slapped about it. Yeah, he got he got ba- <laughs> he was basically bitch slapped so badly he, he turned into the Flash when it came to like characters. <laughs> like everything's my fault. The weight of the world's on my shoulders. I'm like, eh. Oh, I'm like, kill me. <laughs> yeah, like it's my fault. I got this darkness in me. I'm like, okay, okay, Barry <laughs> Allen. Let's let's relax. Okay, but um, yeah, but like since it's Supergirl, it's fine to boost her ego up. <laughs> But you know, I I see why they're doing it though because they're they feel like they they have to compete with Superman. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. It's not. Yeah, it's don't. not a battle he's not, between the both of them. Like he's not me, a main character in your freaking show. Yeah. What what? Because he's hardly in it. <laughs> yeah. Like what would have made it more interesting for me with the whole Superman shit? She the first time they fight, she gets her ass kicked. Second time they fight, still gets her ass kicked. Third time they fight. She holds her own, but loses. And then it may be like somewhere in the fifth season, uh, she is able to fight fight him and beat him, yeah. <laughs> but just barely. Because there's got to be this learning curve to beat somebody like Superman who's had years, yeah. dec- maybe even a decade of training, and has been who's living in the sun. Yeah. He's basically the biggest protector of Earth ever in DC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty and much. They just dragged his ass through the dirt. And <laughs> I'm just saying like, you don't have to compete against Superman. It, I mean, first off, they're a team. It's not a competition between the both yeah, of them, and it's exactly. never been a competition. And when it came to the DC nope. animated stuff, what made uh, Kara more interesting was this, because they changed the Supergirl character a little bit, uh, just a yeah, tad she, bit. She, a bit in the, in, yeah, in the shows and the animated stuff, she had a bit <laughs> of a temper. Yeah, And then Clark, his job was... To teach her how to like maintain that anger, calm that shit down. Yeah, because she's a Kryptonian, <laughs> so that I feel like that would have been a lot more interesting. Because right yeah. now, I feel like they're treating Kara as, as if she was flawless. The only thing and that I, she, the only her only flaw from right now I could see is that she's very naive. But that's about it. I'm I'm talking about like how everyone sees her. Everyone sees her as naive, and that's about it. 
and they praise her for being naive. I mean, that's there's they, no one really complains about her at all. No one has a flaw with her. No one get there's not one thing about the Kara character yeah. that ever, everyone really <laughs> complains about. So, whatever. Don't talk about Supergirl. It's not the greatest show, but you know, I like the actor playing the the main villain for this season. It's Sam Witwer. <laughs> I love Sam Witwer. He's a really cool guy. I mean, like he's a he's a g- true and genuine nerd. I mean. He, he, I, I told you about this YouTuber I, I watch. His name's John Campia. He he went to a Star Wars trivia show against John Campia and beat him, which that was my introduction <laughs> to him. And I thought it was like, oh, shit, dude, that's cool. And apparently he, he likes playing Dungeons and Dragons a lot, and he likes to do DMing, which is dun- Dungeon Master. I thought that's freaking cool, and now I'm watching Is him. that not the guy who plays, who voices Darth Maul? Uh, Sam Witwer, no. Is it I mean, maybe. Sure. Maybe. I think it is. He's on the show called Being Human. He plays the vampire. And I love that show a lot. I'm only on season yeah, one. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to end up on uh, season two soon. But I love the actor. He's the only reason why I'm still watching the show. If it wasn't for him, I would probably, <laughs> I would probably like stop the show. I general. am out <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that about covers it for this podcast today. Today, we, we, we hit a pretty good mark today. I'm very happy. Yeah. yeah well... Kyle, uh, where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kinnear Reviews and YouTube, the same name as well. And yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you follow me or whatever for geeky shit. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you know where to follow me. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Gumps underscore videos. Go follow me there for the latest news updates on my channel, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and all that crap. 